In August 1973, 17-year-old Elma Wayne Henley led police to a boathouse in the Texan city of Houston, where he told them they would find the remains of several missing teenagers buried under the floor. Henley then phoned his mother and confessed to killing Dean Call, the boathouse owner. It's Wayne. Yes, this is Mama, baby. Mama? Yeah. I killed Dean. Wayne? Ma'am? Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, God. Where are you? I'm out of his warehouse. I'm with the police, Mama. Henley then led police to a lake 120 miles away, where he said they'd find more bodies. He said they'd all been killed by 33-year-old electrician Dean Call, who lived in Pasadena, a suburb of Houston. It wasn't long before the boathouse began to give up its grim secrets, as body after body was found. It looked like one of America's worst cases of mass murder. The parents of teenage boys missing from Houston prayed that their sons were not among the increasing number of victims. It emerged that Call had used Henley to lure boys back to his house. But there weren't any bodies buried in the garden. Inside, however, Detectives found what appeared to be a torture board. Call had strapped his victims to the board and abused them, turning up the volume of his stereo to drown the sound of their screams. Most of the boys, aged from 13 to 18, had come from a depressed and run-down part of Houston. All the disappearances took place between 1970 and 1973. But not all the victims had been reported as missing, making the task of identifying them so difficult. Police now knew that Call had used a large wooden box to conceal the bodies as they were taken from his house. Call had bribed Henley, a school dropout, to bring boys to him. But one day, Henley brought him a 15-year-old girl instead. Outraged, Call ordered him to kill her. Henley refused and turned the gun on Call instead. Henley was charged with six counts of murder and sent for trial in San Antonio in August 1974. The massive publicity generated by the case made it difficult for him to receive a fair trial in Houston. Henley was found guilty and sentenced to 594 years. Parents of the victims expressed their feelings. I'm happy. I'm happy. I think it's just great. Justice has been done. And I think we can all sit and rest now. And I, I believe that this is it. I'm hoping that this is going to be the end of it for us. But the ordeal was not over yet. Henley's lawyers argued that the pre-trial publicity had prejudiced the outcome of the trial. Four years later, the sentence was overturned on appeal and a new trial ordered. In 1979, Henley, now 23, was brought before the court again. His mother, Mary, continued to believe in Henley's innocence. Well, I just hope we get a fair trial and are able to bring out our side of it this time. Which to, is? Oh, which is to prove Wayne's innocence. Tommy Watson, who'd lost his 17-year-old son, was dismayed it was happening all over again. I think one dime should have been enough. He's done been found guilty once. In June 1979, Henley was once again sentenced to life in prison. While in jail, he discovered a talent for art. 
and in 1997, a Houston gallery exhibited his work, selling all but one of the paintings on display. Relatives and friends of the victim staged a protest outside the gallery. Elmer Wayne Henley continues to remain in prison for his role in one of America's worst ever cases of mass murder. It's difficult to understand the motives of a mass murderer. While Fritz Harman killed for monetary gain, Michael Ryan and Charles Whitman seem to bear some kind of grudge against society. Wayne Henley's feeble argument that an older man forced him to commit his ghastly crimes is scant consolation for the victims' families.